Oh, Father, we come now. We come to you. Oh, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Give us the revelation that we need to stay. Feed us from the word, the living word. Jesus, you are the bread of life. Jesus, you are our life. Oh, Holy Spirit, take, take the word of God. Make it so real to us. Make it alive to us. Speak those things which we need to hear this day, this hour. Confirm the word. Lord, we open our hearts to take and receive the very word of the Most High God. Lord, open your word to us. And we come humbly before your throne to sit at your feet, to hear your words. Thank you, Lord. We believe you. We trust you. And Lord, we give you all glory, all honor, all praise. You are so worthy. And we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Obedience is greater than sacrifice, is what the scripture says. And today we will talk about obedience. Today we'll talk about a work in progress. Today we will talk about the indwelling of God Almighty himself in us. And coming to the reckon and, and recognizing that it is God that works and is working in us. So, the title, I guess, of this message is Acknowledging Every Good Thing That In Me Is a Work in Progress and Obedience. started off by how many of us want to see the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. Signs, wonders, miracles, healings. Amen. 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 For God to take and confirm his word with signs wonders and miracles. How many want to see that? Amen. Sometimes we seek those things, but we seek them instead of going about it the way that the Lord would have us to go. Glory chasers, I guess you could call them. They want to see these signs and wonders and miracles, and they run to and fro as children toss to and fro, believing every new wind of doctrine and every new thing that comes down the road. When the Word of God specifically lays out what we are to do and how we are to see these things manifest themselves in our lives. So first of all, let's go over here to Psalm 138. Psalm 138. And we'll just begin here in verse 6. Psalm 138, 138, verse 6 says, Though the Lord be high, yet he hath respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Now we know that, and a lot of farmers know, that if you go and drive in a field and it's wet out, it puts ruts in the field, and those are the lowest points, and in those lowest points, what happens? 
water stands in the lowest point. It is just the same with the anointing and with the presence of God. The presence of God fills the lowest points. The humble. The humble before God. That we are to walk humbly before our God. Verse 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch out, stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Verse 8 is where we're going. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. And here scripture says, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Now this is good news because it takes the try out of the Christian walk. The Lord is the one who is working in us and perfecting that which concerns me. So that means that the things that the Lord wants to blossom into my life, he is the one that is perfecting those things. He is the one that is working those things out. Not all of the studying and all of this and all of that and the different conferences and all of that. I'm not saying that that's bad. But to put our faith in those things means that I'm trying to perfect my Christianity. I have studied all of this, and I have this piece of paper from this Bible college, and I went to this theological seminary, and I, 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 instead of the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. How will he do that? How will he do that? By the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, the leading of the Holy Spirit, we are led by the Spirit, right? We're led by the Spirit of God. And since we're led by the Spirit of God, there has to be obedience on our part. We choose. Now somebody can lead you, but you choose to follow. The Holy Spirit can lead and guide and say, this is the way. There is a voice that says, now this is the way. That's scripture, right? But it's our choice whether we want to follow or choose our own path. Well, Lord, I don't think that's the way that we should do it. I think we need to do it this way. Lord, haven't I done this and haven't I studied this and haven't I done this? And then the Lord says, Yes, you have. You've perfected it in your eyes, but it's not perfect in mine because it is I who perfect. Simple obedience. And it is a step by step. Sometimes we see the end result or we see where we want to be, but we have to obey and do the first thing first, which is just a simple step. Here, call this person. That's the first step to 
Signs, wonders, miracles confirming the word, God's glory, God being, being high and lifted up. The first step, give, give this person that. That's the first place. And if you don't do that, you're not going to reach there. It's like try, you know, having a road map and saying, okay, we've got, we're going to go to Florida, so here's how we're going to go. We're going to go north on 65. Well, it's going to take you a long time to get there because that doesn't go that way. No, we have to go south on 65, and then there's another, there's another choice. We can go 465 south, or we can cut over and go 465 east. We can go 74, or we can, there's a lot of different ways. But we follow the leading, and it's a step by step. If you want to mature in Jesus Christ, if you want to have a deeper relationship with the Lord, if you want him to reveal himself to you, if you want these things, a heart desire for Christ, you have to do the first thing first, and that is obedience, and that is doing what you may think may be a very small thing, but that is the beginning. That's the first step. Amen? Amen. And God, here's a promise. Verse 8 again. The Lord, the Lord himself will perfect that which concerneth me. I know the plans, the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, thoughts of peace, and to give you what? An expected end. But obedience is the first step. Obedience is the first step to the expected end, right? You can't do your own thing and then ask the Lord to bless it. It doesn't work that way. It's kind of like Kool-Aid and orange juice. Here, Lord, I'm going to make orange Kool-Aid, and I'm going to ask you to bless it and make it orange juice. It doesn't work that way. The Lord says, no, take oranges, cut them up, Squish them out, and you'll have orange juice. Then I don't have to bless it to make it orange juice because it's, it's orange juice. You see how that works? Obedience. It is obedience. Obedience to the word, obedience to that still small voice, obedience to following the leading of the Holy Spirit. And those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But he perfects that which concerns me. He's the one that perfects it. It's not me trying to perfect my walk. The way that we perfect our walk, the way that we are perfecting, that's a continuing, right? That's a continuing word. He is perfecting holiness in us. Perfecting by obedience. That's how it works. Not, I'm going to do this, do this, and do this, and then I'll be holy. No, it doesn't work that way. It is, this is what the Holy Spirit has said, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set my heart, I'm going to set my heart that if the Lord tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. That's simple. If the Lord tells me to call somebody, I'm going to call them. 
the Lord tells me to stop by somebody's house, I'm going to stop there. If the Lord tells me to give this certain amount or this, I'm going to give. If the Lord says, don't say that, then I'm not going to say it. I'm going to obey. Then he will perfect that which concerneth me. Is this making sense? Does this make sense why we haven't seen some of the things that we've seen in the book of Acts? With the signs and the wonders and the miracles? Because we just want to do our own thing. And then say, we're going to do our thing, and then God, you bless it. And he says, no, that's not how it works. You needed to do this part right here first. Because that's my plan. That way I'll get glory out of it. Because if you perfect it, then it's yours. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10 says, oh, we have to go to verse 9. Oh, verse 8. Sorry, Brian. Let's keep going back. You want to read it in context, right? We always read Scripture in context. You can't take Scripture and just take one out because that's dangerous. It's like the young man that wanted to know what God wanted him to do, so he opened up his Bible and said, Whatever I point to, Lord, that's what I'm going to do. And he pointed to the Scripture and it said, Judas hung himself. He says, oh, is that what you have for me, Lord? So he flipped open his Bible again and then came over and he put his finger on a verse and says, do likewise, brethren. <laughs> That's what happens when you take Scripture out of context. We don't do that. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Believing that when I gave myself to Jesus Christ, he gave himself to me. I gave myself away because he gave himself away. An exchanged life. For by grace are you saved, what? Through faith. And that not of yourselves. The only thing that we brought to this whole covenant, the only thing that we brought to this deal was our sin and our wretched life. That's all we brought. It's not of yourselves, it's the gift. So if God gives us his life, if he gives us eternal life as his gift, right? It's his that he's giving us. And he is the one who is perfecting it in our lives. We are his workmanship, right? That's what this says. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Hey, I did this. Anytime that you can boast about anything, it's a work. Isn't it? Anytime you boast about something, it's a work. Look what we did. We planted all these flowers. Look what we did. We mowed the yard. Look at this. We did. And it's not bad to do those things, to be a good steward of the things God gives you. But using that as an example, look what we did. It was a work. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Why? Because verse 10 says, we are his. We are his. We are his workmanship. You know, when you read the Bible sometimes, that's what you need to do. Take a passage of scripture and take the thing apart 
and let the Holy Spirit talk to you about it. So we, we, we start here. For we are His. Oh, praise God. I am His and He is mine, bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We are His workmanship. He's the one that designed. He's the one. We are His workmanship and we are created in Christ. I am one with him and he's one with me. In that day, I in them, thou in me, and Father, thou in us. And that Father, that you love them as you have loved me. That's in John chapter 17, and that's the prayer that Jesus prayed. So we are his workmanship in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works. Who's going to do the works? He is through us. He created us. So see now, He created us for good works, to glorify Him. Who's going to perfect it? Well, I got to try to do this, I got to do this, and I got to do this, and then God can use me. How many times have you heard that? How many times have you heard, well, God has put me on a shelf? You ever heard that? I've heard that too. That's a lie from the pit. Because we're his works. God doesn't put people on shelves. You put yourself on the shelf. God doesn't say, well, you're unusable. That doesn't work. That violates scripture because we're his workmanship. And we are being perfected in him. Why would he put you on a shelf? That doesn't make sense. He's working through us. He's working with us and through us. So we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should what? That we should walk in them. That we should just walk in them. How do we walk in them? By following the leading of the Holy Spirit. What does that take us back to? Obey. Obedience. You want to see the glory of God in your life? You want to see the glory of God? Obey. So simple. You don't have to work it up. We don't have to have lights and smoke machines and all. No. This morning's worship was so precious, wasn't it? And what the Lord said, you have touched, you have touched the highest heaven with your worship. Why? Because we worship the way that God told us to worship. We worshiped in spirit and in truth with a pure heart. And we touched the heart of heaven. We touched the heart of God. And wasn't, wasn't there such a presence here this morning? There, I mean, people, I, I stood and I looked at all of you, and there was no body. There was, every head was bowed, every person was prostrate in their heart before God. You can't buy that. You can't work that up. But we can enjoy that, we can go there. Whenever we choose, Amen. by doing it the way that God says, in our prayer closets, here in this church, by just simply obeying. Amen. Simple obedience. It's not hard. We just follow the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. He will lead us from point A to point B. So many people are so tied up in point B. No, let's just start at point A. Right? All right. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Everybody knows this passage of Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Everybody memorized this when we were in Sunday school, right? Little kids. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what? He's a new creature. 
He's a new creature. This morning in our Bible study, we talked about that he took out the old stony heart and he put within us a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh feels. A stone heart doesn't. Feels what? Feels what God feels. Feels what the Holy Spirit feels. Old Testament Christians, the Spirit would come on them, come and go and come and go. But now we've been created in Christ Jesus. Old things, the old nature, the old man, the old self, that poison that was within us because we were the sons of Adam has passed away. And behold, all things are new, have become new. And all things are what? They're of God. I didn't make myself. See, this, this passage of Scripture, it absolutely tears down the people who stand up and say, well, I've decided that I'm going to be a whatever. I've decided that I'm going to be a woman. You can't. You can't do that because you're violating how God made you. That's the bottom line of the whole thing. You're violating scripture. Not that it doesn't make any sense. Not that it tears down the family values. Not that it tears everything up. No, you're violating scripture because it's God who made you. And when you got born again, when you got born again, he remade you as a new creature. A creature now who is able, a vessel for his glory and honor that can be filled with his spirit and filled with himself. And he had to create that. You couldn't do it. He created it and said, now... Now I can pour my spirit into this. Before I couldn't. Now I can. Now I can pour my life into this. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Because of our oneness with Jesus Christ, we've been reconciled to God. We can stand in the presence of a holy God because of our union with Jesus Christ, our oneness with him, with no guilt, no condemnation. Why? Because we are his workmanship and we're filled with him. If you are standing in front of a holy God and you feel like you're condemned or you feel like there's something that's going on or something amiss, you're looking at yourself. And you're not looking at what Christ has done. And I'm going to ask a question. The Lord posed this to me. And this will just absolutely shake you to the very core. For those that are dealing with guilt, for those that are dealing with past sins, past life, this will absolutely set you free and change your life forever. The one question that Jesus Christ asked me, was my blood not good enough? Was my blood not good enough to eradicate all sin, not just yours, but the sin of all mankind, was my blood not good enough? There's only one or two answers. So, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Hey, you're reconciled. There's no more enmity. The middle wall of partition has been torn down. The veil has been taken down. Now we have free access 
to God, a holy, righteous God, because of our union and because of what God himself has done and who he has made us. Now then, we are, we, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Let's start living as ambassadors of Christ. How do we do that? We obey. Oh, I've got to get this going, and I've got to get this set up, and we've got to get this ready, and we've got to do this. No. No. We simply obey. If the Lord says, go here, that's what we do. If the Lord says, get this ready, then that's what we do. We don't try to perfect it and then do it. We take the first step and just obey and do what he says. He will perfect it. Okay? When I get it all together and I've got it all put together, then we'll step out and do it. Wrong answer, because now it's your work. It's not his work. So now we are new creatures. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made. Who made us? He made us. Who made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? He did. He did. And he will perfect it. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We are in him, and he is in us. In him we live and move and have our very being. Now, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Colossians 1, 27. What does it say? Colossians 1, 27 says... Not Philippians, Colossians. Well, they're right beside each other. Oh, we have to go back to verse 25. Sorry, Brian. Wherefore, Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to Fulfill the word of God. This dispensation. What dispensation is Paul talking about? He tells us in verse 26. Even the mystery which hath been hidden from the ages and from the generations, but now is made manifest to who? To his saints. to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory, the riches of the glory of God, of this mystery among the Gentiles, the mystery of the riches of the glory of God is this, Christ in you. Jesus Christ himself in you living, moving, and having his being in you, leading, guiding, and then we obey, and we see the glory. We see the hand of God. We see God's, God's power. Not trying to do it. I've got to go to him. Well, we've got to go to this ministry school of healing so that way we know how to do this. Nothing wrong with a ministry school of healing. But you better be doing it the way that God told you to do it. And you better be stepping and following the leading of the Holy Spirit every step of the way. Amen. 
If God leads you that direction, then that's the direction that you go. If God leads you to pray for somebody, why do you need to go get a piece of paper? Why do you need to go and get some man's whatever so you can go out and love somebody? I don't get it. I really don't get that. Just go out into the highways, into the byways, and as you are prompted by the Holy Spirit, just live Jesus in front of them. And if there's a need, it will be prompted to you, and just do what the Lord says to do. That's pretty simple. Isn't it? And who will perfect it? He will. Because you're walking with him, you're obeying what he's, do, what he's telling you to do. So as you walk in obedience, he will perfect your walk. He'll perfect you in Christ. There's no more trying. I'm going to try to be a good Christian. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. No, I'm going to obey as he leads, and then holiness. He will perfect holiness. He will perfect that which concerneth me. He will perfect his life in me as I simply obey. But we got to do the first thing first. I'm going to use Brian as an example. Sorry, Brian, because this is where all this came from, using Brian. Brian's going to put together our website for us. Brian's a lot like me. He's a perfectionist. He wants to have it, you know, just so. But we need to get it up and running. So what do we do? We put it up and we do the first thing first. Get the site up. We've got a lot of people that are dumping a lot of social media platforms because of their stance on anti-God, anti-Christian things. So our website, we're going to have our sermons, we're going to have teaching on there, we're going to have different links, we're going to link Sam into it so that way we can stay in touch with our missionary over in Uganda. Yes, but it's a work in progress. Do the first thing first. Get the site up. We'll work on it. It doesn't have to be perfect when you throw it up there. God said, get it up. So that's what we're going to do. How simple. And then he will perfect it. He will lead and guide us to what we need to do with it. Right? Praise God. Same way with our lives. Same exact way with our lives. We take the first step. If you've got something going on in your life, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then as you take that step, then he'll perfect. You know you're on the right path. Obedience always, when you obey, you know you're on the right path. When you disobey and try to do it your own way, you get all squirreled around and get lost. You don't know where you're going. You don't know. You have to ask God to bless it. God, make this tang orange juice. You all are old enough to remember tang, right? Oster the astronauts drank it. We as kids, yeah, we drank it. It's not orange juice, though, is it? No, it's not. Not even close. All right. Last scripture, and we'll close with this one. Philemon 6. That's the three-minute warning, right? <laughs> Philemon 6. Right before Hebrews. Philemon 6. And it says that the communication, the way that we live our lives, the way that we demonstrate the glory of God, 
the way that we take this presence that we had this morning that was so very, very precious. It was so holy, holy, holy. It was God Almighty here with his children. Okay? That's why we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You're not going to get that when you watch online. You had to be here to experience it. Amen. Right? And being here, you just experience something so holy and so special. And now we can take that, take the communication, that the communication of our faith, we take that the way that we walk, we take that with us. By it becomes effectual, it works. How? By acknowledging every good thing which is in us in Christ. You have to know this. So Christ is in me. I acknowledge that. I know that. I live that. I believe that. I walk after that. And now when I go out into my circle of influence, into my world, my part, as I go out into that, then God perfects that which he is working in me and through me. He perfects it as I acknowledge his presence and then the communication of my faith, it becomes effectual to the people around me. This is how Stephen and Philip and those that were deacons, they weren't the apostles. The apostles were praying and spending their time in the word of God. What was Stephen and Philip, these guys, what were they doing? They were serving. They were waiting tables. They were doing, obeying what God told them to do. And because they were obeying, then somebody would come up and they would have a need. And then miracles started happening with Stephen and with Philip. They weren't even in the church. They were out and about. You see how it works? Instead of chasing miracles, instead of chasing signs and wonders, we come back to, I'm just going to obey God. And the signs and the wonders will happen according to what? The power that where works within us. That's Ephesians, that we pray, that we understand what we got within us, that we listen close. That's why we spend our time in the prayer closets, so that way we know that we are in tune and walking with the Lord. And then when the Lord tells us to go from, to do this, to do that, by spending time with him, we know his voice and he tells us to go and we do what he says and then the signs and the wonders and the miracles, the things that people need in their lives comes out. The gifts of the Spirit, because they're gifts, right? Then the gifts of the Spirit come out. Why? To glorify him. They bring him honor and glory and praise. What did we do? We just simply obeyed. We simply obeyed. Did y'all get something today? Amen. Amen and amen. Father, we do so love you. We are thankful, Father, for your presence. We're thankful for your love. We're thankful for your grace. We're thankful for who you are. We're thankful for your son. We're thankful for our Lord. We're thankful that we're one with him. We're thankful for the, for the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. That, Lord, in the days to come, we grieve not the Holy Spirit. How do you grieve the Holy Spirit? You grieve him by not obeying, by not following his leading and his guiding because Father knows best. He has a plan. And if we will just obey what the leading says to do, then that plan will work out for his glory. Oh, Father, we do so want to see your glory 
We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you praised and worshipped. We want to see people fall on their face before you, O oh God, and pour out themselves. We want to see a revival in the church, O oh God. We want to see a revival in this country, O oh God. We want to see a revival. But Lord, let us begin here. Let us begin in ourselves. Let us begin in our heart, O oh God. And we will be quick to obey what you tell us to do. And Father, we do worship you, Jesus. We love you. We give you all glory and honor. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening the scriptures. This we pray. This we believe. These things we speak in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. you, Lord. Lord, we love you with all that we are. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Janet, why don't you come down here, sweetheart? Praise God.